Okay, now we're going to go to the montage. Um, I'll try and make it as simple as possible because you can use it for very, very um, many op operations. You can use video to make DVDs, you can splice things, add sound effects to movies and so on, but for what we're going to use it for, we're just going to use it as a montage. So let's open Wave Lab. And again, when you default, when you switch it, the wave lab on, whatever was in there last, when you shut it down, will appear. So, for instance, if you had Sunday on, and you'd just been putting effects on and rendering, it will be in there. The easy way is you will have a cross, and that will be the track selections. And if you close down that track, you should then get back to this window. As long as you've saved, and saved it to the correct place, you should be okay. So we've got the basic window, we need to go into File, we go to New, and then we open up Montage. We've set our uh, sample rate, so that's fine. And what we got now is a new project in Montage. At this point, I'll just point out that the Effects window and the Master and the Dithering has no effect, um, really. The only one that has an effect, sorry, will be the Master Volume, right? So if you want to just drag that down to the bottom and keep it out of the way until you're ready to do your final levels so let's have a look at the window, if we maximize the window um, what we have are two separate uh, windows within the main pro project we have the overview window at the top and then we have our working window at the bottom um, so the idea is we only have one working window, one track as they call it because we're only going to merge in a linear fashion. If we were doing video to say a DVD and we wanted to add sound effects we would then add tracks as we went but for the sake of this we just need one track uh, to work with. So we want to put a track in there uh, what we're going to do is put the track that we've just rendered into it and start the montage. So the way we do it is we get the cursor in the main window we right click and then we insert file. Uh, the one what we rendered was Saturday 04, so we double click it and it drags it straight into the working window. Now, in our top window, our overview window, we have certain tabs which give us many options on what we want to do around the track, which we'll show you in a bit. But the main one we'll be in is edit. And in the uh, overview window we have a magnifier which as we drag the magnifier across it also then gives us what we're going to view in our working window which is quite useful so if we drag that to the end of the track and a little bit more uh, we're going to add another track on the back of Saturday so at this point I'll, point, I'll, I'll just show you that there is the cursor at the start of the track flashing we need to now go into the top part of that working window we've got the four uh, star uh, cursor so if we put the cursor at the end and then drag it into the track we see that we've now snapped to the end of the track and that's done by this snap option here this green um, uh, icon so now we're at the end of the track we can now in the uh, working window without audio right click again insert file and then we'll find our next track in this case I'm going to put Thursday so I'll double tr double click and we can see now from our edit window at the top that we have two tracks back to back so using our magnifier we can now drag magnifier to the size of the two tracks and we can see them there in the window and what is very evident is the fact that this is obviously a bigger mix uh, volume wise than the second track so we can go in and alter that in a second but as a rule if you were doing it for real in Cubase you would try and keep them matched as much as possible before you even go into the this stage so they wouldn't be so wide, widely uh, sort of different so we're now going to merge these tracks and the way that we do it is we drag the fire to the center or the splice of the tracks and there we can see that this view is what we got in our working window um, so let's go through what happens with the track now we can select the track by in the bottom section of the stereo track we can click into each one 
to highlight the track we wish to move on or, or alter. As we move the cursor up the track we can see that now we have an option at the bottom to move the tracks together to merge them by dragging the whole track across with the left hand mouse button. We can then go in and fine tune that once we start playing but let's just show you what else we have so as we move the cursor further up the uh, stereo track we get to the center and we have another icon and this icon is the one we use to alter our volume setting because each track may have slight differences we can now match them and master them together so those are the two options when moving the tracks in and out of the working window so let's now have a look at what we've done so if we were to play the track we're going from Saturday through now into Thursday. Okay, and that was a seamless merge. But we can also now move it into a position where we, if we wanted to make it a bit sooner, we can do so. We can go in and change volume levels. If we think that that was uh, too loud coming in, we can then go in and drop that down. Let's stop the track. So you got the basic idea now of merging the tracks. That could happen as many times as you like, obviously, from the length of the track. The next important thing is putting the markers in for the track. Because, obviously, if you want to play through the track or skip a track, you need to have markers when burning the video, uh, burning the CD. So, let's select the first track, which is at the bottom. We've highlighted it. We then go along the top window, the overview window, and we go to our markers. Right, This is where we're going to now install the markers into the track. We push the cursor to the very beginning of the CD, and then we go to the Insert tab. In the Insert tab, we have many selections, but the ones we're going to look at are the red options here first thing we do is add a start to the track and a cursor now or a uh, marker sorry appears on the timeline we go back to edit because now we're going to put we want to see the track split on our splice so we can move the cursor to the point that we want to hear or have the tracks uh, switch over So we can see that the more logical point would be at that point there. Uh, now we need to go back to our marker option. We need to go to our inserts and because we have a merge, we have a splice, we need to have a track splice uh, marker. So we put that in place and what we've done, we've separated it Saturday off from Thursday, which we'll see. Um, when we come to actually uh, looking at the burn uh, part of this CD. So let's go back to edit and let's drag our cursor across to the end of the track. Snap it to the end of the track and guess what? We go to markers, we go to insert and we put end of CD. Of course this can happen as many times as there are tracks. The name of the track will come into place, but what we can do is have, in our markers option, we can go in and type um, the track name in there. Okay, so we now see that Saturday is that track there, and then Thursday will be the next one. And so on, and so on, until we reach the end of the track. We can also see that where the splits happen in minutes and seconds and in fact milliseconds so that's basically doing the montage it's very simple there's not really anything more i can say um it does does give you the option however to add effects uh it's not advisable i would rather do it in the um cubase than do it in this because 
you're going to affect the whole of the track, or whole, all of the tracks, in fact. Uh, so you'd be better off not to add any effects. However, I haven't really sort of discovered it or played around with it. Um, so that's basically it. That's how you do it. Let's have a look at actually burning it now. So we want to burn the whole image. Uh, once we've got all seven tracks in, we've got our CD tab. If we click our CD tab, we've got a sp pair of spectacles and we have our burn or write to CD. If we use our spectacles, it will then test to make sure that our markers are in the right place. We don't have anything that shouldn't be happening. Okay, it's saying it's valid and it says that the CD length is about 9 minutes 55 seconds. So we're okay, everything's set up right. The next option is to write CD and this is the point where I can tell you that I don't have a drive to be able to uh, um, go through this section because my drives are, uh, are disabled at the moment. But you would be able to select the device you want to go to or in fact the best option would be to render to a temporary file before burning because if you're going to send it to me it would probably be better in an ISO file so I can then um, burn it from my other, seat, uh, my other computer. But that's how you do it and obviously you would get this option to say OK, we click OK and away it goes and that should then burn the whole of that montage into a CD format. Hopefully, that helped you out. If not, God help us.